Well, the song says, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star, sweet Jesus. He's the God of every nation. Oh, bless his name. God bless you and welcome to your divine appointment, which is the media ministry of the Devon Jackson MD Ministries. I'm Dr. Jackson. And this class is Thursday school, Sunday school, three days early, so we can be ready for Sunday. <laughs> so glad you've joined us from around the world. God bless you. We want you to know these recordings are available on our various social media platforms, 24 hours a day on demand. You can go back at any time for a group Bible study, a group Sunday school, uh, personal study, family devotions in any kind of way. We want to ask you if you would kindly like and share this video, amen, and with at least two people this week. And when you're watching, would you kind of give us a thumbs up? It makes a big difference to help us get the word out, amen. We bless God for that privilege. And here we are the first Sunday of June, 2024. And we're talking today about riches, glorious riches. And we bless God for that. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. And we're excited for the glorious riches you provided for us. We want to partake of it all and be better because of it. <laughs> we pray it in Jesus' name. Thank God. And amen. Well, I hope you have your Bible. We are in the book of Colossians and we're covering the end of chapter one over into chapter two. So it will be verse 24 of chapter one through verse three of chapter two. And some may wonder about that. Initially, the scriptures were continuous. They were broken into chapters in order to help with uh, specification of portions of scripture, amen. But often the thought continues from one chapter into the other as opposed to one continuous uh, manuscript. Amen. And we bless God that uh, here the apostle, the great apostle Paul is writing and there's some exciting things that we're hearing. In fact, this uh, summer unit is about hope. Hallelujah. Experiencing hope. And for the last uh, uh, unit, all of our lessons were about faith. Now we're talking about hope. Glory to God. Well, here we are. I'm reading in the English Standard Version, Colossians chapter 1. Uh, and I'm beginning, excuse me, with verse 24. It says, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. That's some Christian maturity. Glory to God. He says, and in my flesh, I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of the body. That is the church. Well, a couple of incredible things here. First of all, the Apostle Paul is putting forth that principle that we live for others. We live sacrificially, not just for personal interest. Of course, we do things for personal interest, but our focus can't be self. Our focus has to be the broader picture. And we as believers, we live to be a witness to the lost, to come to Christ. We live to be an encouragement and inspiration. Hallelujah, the Bible says provoke one another to good works. I, we want our life to stir other believers and encourage them and, and inspire them in their growth in um, their walk with the Lord. We live for others. Amen. And Christ is our example of that. He left glory to come for our sake. And Christ is the head of the body. And we make up the body. The church is the body of Christ. So the head suffered. It's the head started the process and suffered greatly. Hallelujah. But the suffering isn't finished. And the body has to pick it up from there and fill up or finish, complete the sufferings that need to be done so the lost are saved and so that the body of Christ is built up. Amen. Glory to God. Because, of course, the lost being saved, those persons haven't yet said yes to the Lord but they really are already a part of the body. They just haven't come in. It's like someone is a part of the family, but they're outdoors. They haven't come in the house. So when we're uh, spreading the gospel to the unbelievers, we're basically going out amongst the world and gathering in our own brothers and sisters out of the world. Come on in the house. <laughs> Do you know where the house is? Sometimes uh, children have drifted so far and so long, they've lost their way. Oh, glory to God. So we're going to get our brothers and sisters. Are you with me? And since we don't know who is who, we'd spread the gospel 
and the love of Christ to everyone. So here's that principle about finishing out the sufferings. Uh, when he says what's lacking, what's missing, and hasn't been done yet, we finish out those sufferings. Well, it, this is also a beautiful picture. Uh, it is said that one of the ways that um, uh, the Jewish groom would propose to uh, his bride-to-be, uh, the way he would propose is that he would bring a cup. And this cup now was uh, uh, from, from grapes. And so in the bottom, there would be sediment. You know how juice is, there's, there's sediment. Some people call it the dregs. And that material in the bottom is bitter. The top, the juice itself, sweet, but in the bottom it's bitter. And one of the ways that he would propose is to hand her the cup. If she would not drink it all, that was her saying, no, I will not marry you. Glory to God. But we, the church, must drink the cup of sufferings. Shall we drink and enjoy uh, the joyous part of walking with the Lord and bypass all the suffering? No, no, no. There's both. It's all mixed in there. Scripture says, though, if you suffer with me, you shall reign with me. Oh, glory to God. Our labors are not in vain, and we will reign in the future. But there are sufferings for this present time. Apostle Paul said, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory. It shall be revealed in us. Oh, glory to God. Help me shout glory. God has so much for us. Amen. But suffering comes along the way. Oh, glory to God. Now look at verse uh, 25. It says, of which I became a minister. Because now it's talking about, uh, we're doing all of these things in verse 24 for the sake of the body, which is the church. And then he picks it up saying, of which, talking about the church, I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you. Why? To make the word of God fully known. This is glorious because the apostle is talking about stewardship and a steward is a manager. The steward is not the owner of the business or the owner of a property or whatever. The steward is a manager. And the apostle is saying, God has given me a stewardship. There is a task that's been assigned to me by the great owner, and I need to be faithful to the task. And that task is to make the word of God fully known. Now, every manager, every steward then has a, a oversight. They have a certain amount of a third authority, uh, but with it comes great responsibility and accountability to the one who made them the steward. Oh, glory to God. You and I likewise are stewards, stewards of our time, our talents, our treasure, and our influence, and stewards of our body, because everything belongs to God. Uh, the, the cattle on a thousand hills belong to God. The scripture says over there in Corinthians, your body, that belongs to the Lord. You're not your own. You're bought with a prize. Hallelujah. And your body. No, you're not. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, temple of the Spirit of God. Your body, your soul, your spirit, everything is God. Oh, glory to God. Everything we are and everything we have, it's God. The earth, the Bible says in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and everybody that dwell in. Everything's God. Let me shout everything. <laughs> And since God, everything is his, then we need to, whatever things we've been assigned to steward or to manage, we need to manage it well according to the will of the owner because we are accountable to him. Oh, glory to God. And our job as believers in terms of the gifts, the talents, the opportunities, the influence, all these things, use it to make the word of God fully known. Oh, blessed be God. What a glorious job. Look at verse 26. The mystery, to, okay, so the previous verse, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now, help me shout now, glory to God, but now revealed to his saints. This word about mystery talks about there is something basically that was a secret. That thing was covered up in past ages and generations, but now in the New Testament time, it's being revealed, the cover's being pulled off to discover something 
is to discover it. You take the cover off. So the Lord is allowing us to discover these glorious truths that were before a secret because it wasn't revealed. And now it's been discovered, revealed, and made known. Oh, aren't we glad to be in the New Testament? Oh, glory to God. Now look at the next verse. Verse 27 says, to them, talking about the saints, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery. Now, the churches that he uh, speaks to, uh, the, the church at Colossae, the church at, uh, and of course the, the book of Romans was, was not just the church at Rome, but many other churches, uh, the church at Galatia, the church at Philippi, all of these different books, the book of Philippians, book of Colossians, so on. They have Jews and Gentiles in them. And the apostle is having to make known now that, that there were things that were unknown in the past and now it's revealed in the New Testament in Christ. So there's some new things letting the Jews know. There's some new things. There's some things you didn't know in the Old Testament time. It wasn't all revealed in the law, but it's made known in Christ. In fact, the word testament means covenant. So our Bible has the Old Covenant Testament and the New Covenant Testament. Well, in the New there are things that are, of course, new. And Jesus, on uh, uh, the night when he was going to be arrested, when he had uh, the Passover with his disciples, he held the cup. They were celebrating Passover. In the middle of Passover, he establishes what we now call Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper. Because he said, this is the New Testament in my blood. Passover, you were celebrating how those earthly lambs and animals, their blood was put on the doorposts and protected them. But now, I'm the Lamb of God. This is the new covenant that's in my blood. I'm going to be shedding it very shortly. Oh, glory to God. And that bread that's broken, this is my body that's broken for you. Oh, bless his name. So Jesus at the table prophesied. Oh, glory to God. I'm about to allow my body to be broken and my blood to be shed to establish a new covenant in my blood. Oh, bless his name. And what did the blood do? The blood paid the price. Oh, glory to God. The blood paid the price for our sins. Glory to God. And now we're saved because of the precious blood of Jesus. Help me shout glory. Oh, bless his name. So he's, he's, bringing, he's bringing the whole congregation along to let them know now something glorious pertaining to the Gentiles. Amen. So to them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the, what's, what's there? The riches of the glory of this mystery. What? The Gentiles get included in this richness. The richness of the glory of the mystery. But what's the mystery? The mystery is Christ in you. The hope of glory. What? Oh, because in the Old Testament, Old Covenant times, in the Old Testament times, the law was external. But in the New Covenant, New Testament times, now Christ is internal. So we went from external to the internal. Christ in you. Glory to God. Number two, Christ is in not just the Jews. In the Old Testament, the law went to the Jews. But in the New Testament, it's both Jew and Gentile, which is everybody. Glory to God. And then number three, Christ is in all of us and he is the hope of glory. Oh, bless his name. Now, this phrase that Christ is the hope of glory really is like Christ is a pledge or a down payment. It's like someone says, listen, I'm going to come back. And as a pledge that I'm coming back, I'm leaving you with my precious joy. So that thing is your security that they actually will do what they said they would do. And the promise will happen that they're coming back. Christ in us is the pledge that there will be eternal life. There will be a glory to come. Whatever you're going through now, Christ in you, he is that pledge that there is a glorious day coming. Heaven is real. Eternity is real. Your hope is perpetual because Christ is. Oh, bless his name. He's the hope of God. <laughs> Without him, we got no hope. He is. 
our eternal hope. Oh, bless his name. All three of these, Christ in us, Christ in both Jew and Gentile, and Christ in us, the hope of glory. Oh, bless his sweet name. Look at verse 28. Him, talking about Christ, him we proclaim. Ah, we make him known. And look, we're going to see five words here. Uh, proclaim, warning, teaching, wisdom, and mature or maturity. Those five, all in this verse. He says him, talking about Christ, we proclaim, which is to preach. We declare him everywhere. And what else? Warning everyone. Uh-oh. Why do we need to warn people? Because there's a danger for those that don't receive Christ. So we're warning who? Everybody. And we're teaching who? Everybody. What are we teaching? We warn those to let them know there's a danger in rejecting Christ. And then those that will receive Christ, we must teach them of him. Apostle Paul, um, he knew the Old Testament law. He said, I'm a Pharisee of Pharisees. But after he received Christ, he went out. I believe it talks about there in Galatians. He was in the Arabian desert. I believe it was three years. The Lord having to teach him New Testament things. He knew the old, but he didn't know the new. The Lord had to teach it. Well, now the apostles saying, we got to warn the unbeliever, but we're those that are believers. You got to be taught. Amen. Taught the way of God. We spoke about that uh, on last week. As a tree has a stave that guides it to grow. If the stave that's attached to the young tree is bent, then the tree will grow and it will be bent. So we need proper teaching so that the teaching is straight and so will we. Ah, glory to God. So proclaim warning, teaching um, with wisdom. Glory to God. Now this wisdom can have a dual meaning. Not only am, are we giving them wisdom, because the scripture says that Christ has been made wisdom unto us. Not only are we giving them Christ to his wisdom, but we do it in a wise way. Because the scripture also says, he that when his souls is wise. So we must declare and witness to people wisely. We see the example of Christ. When he was talking to Nicodemus, because he's a theologian of sorts as a religious leader, Jesus taught theology. You've got to be born again, and the spirit is like the wind there in chapter 3. But when Jesus is dealing with the woman at the well, he talked to her about water. Why? We're at a well. Jesus witnessed the people according to where they were, what their circumstance was. The man that was sick of the palsy, Jesus said, son, your sins be forgiven me. And what's easier to say, rise, take up your bed, or your sins are forgiven. The man's mind was on his palsy. Jesus adds and says, not only am I delivering your body from palsy, I'm delivering your soul. Oh, Lord, I'm making you whole, body and soul. Oh, blessed be God. Jesus witnessed to people according to their circumstances. So he used wisdom in witnessing. So we need to use wisdom in our witnessing as far as our method. And what we're giving them is true heavenly wisdom, which is Christ himself. Oh, glory to God. And not only wisdom, but the other word in there is mature. That we may present everyone mature in Christ. Apostle Paul is making it clear. Of course, the, the, the principle is we're born again as a newborn babe. Apostle Peter talks about that. We desire the sincere milk of the word. We're not born mature. If we allow the spirit of God to have his way in us, he will mature us. We leave the church for that. Some people say, I don't need to go to church. Darlings, that's error and it's sin. Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. And so much the more, as you see the day approach, it's necessary. We're a body. Every part in your body needs to be connected to all the other parts. It's necessary. Church membership is vital. Every sheep needs a shepherd. And the word shepherd is what the word pastor means. Every believer, you need a pastor. Not media, somebody that doesn't know you or somebody you send letters and emails. No, you need a pastor, a personal connection to lead you. I God, it's necessary. Oh, bless his name. And that maturation process happens in the body of Christ. Uh, in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, the Lord Jesus gave these gifts and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for, what for? For the perfecting or maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. 
these gifts, they're operating in the church. We need to be there. Oh, glory to God. Be part of it. You need the body, and the body needs you. Glory to God. Look at verse 29. He says, look at this. For this I toil. Oh, struggle. Wow, look how he's just being so transparent. With all his energy that he powerfully works within me. Also, Paul testifies here that there's a toil and that there's a struggle. The walk of the believer has uh, been described in various ways, but let's look at three of them. Um, and let's look at three of them. Labor, a race, and a war. And these all require effort. But with all, there are victories. Let's look at the first one, labor. Therefore, my beloved, this is 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Now, the verse right before it says, but thanks be to God that always give us uh, the victory. Oh, glory to God. He always gives us the victory. And, and knowing that we always get the victory, look at 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work. Yes, as believers, we labor. In the work of the Lord, for as much as you know your labor, your work, it's not in vain in the Lord. It's not empty. It's not fruitless. It's not to no avail. My God, it makes a difference. So the Christian walk is labor. That's why we're talking about toil and struggle. Here's another picture. The Christian walk is described as a race. Uh, this is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, uh, the, the second part of that verse, part B. Hebrews 12 and 1, part B. It says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. We don't want someone to beset us, slow us down, hinder us, disturb our running. Uh, that so easily beset us. And let us run with patience. Run and do it patiently. Wow. It says, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. God has a race for each of us to run, and we're to run it patiently. Glory to God. So the Christian life is a race. Here's a third picture that is described of the Christian life, and that is that there's war. There's warfare. That's Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the uh, devices, the tricks, the methodologies of the devil, right? Because we need armor because we're in the middle of a war. <laughs> and the armor, of course, helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, truth, uh, the belt of truth around our waist, our feet covered with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and the shield of faith, labor, race, and war. <gasps> but in all three, we have the victory, the victory, the victory, the victory, the victory. Help me shout the victory, the victory, the victory. Help me shout victory. Through Christ Jesus. So the toil and the struggle is all right, darling, because we have the victory. Glory to God. Look at, uh, now we're moving to uh, the uh, chapter 2. In verse 1, it says, For I want you to know how great a struggle mm -hmm, I have for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face. Some of these churches Apostle Paul established and some he would go at, in a circle and would visit them, whether he actually established the church or he helped to build it. He's an apostle and he's an evangelist. Amen. And so uh, he would check on them. But he says, I want you to know how great a struggle I have. And I'm doing it for you and for and for others as well, even though I may not see you face to face by by reason of circumstances. And this issue about a great struggle. Uh, is our Bible spotlight. Glory to God. <laughs> so we want to look at that great struggle. But just before we do, we want to celebrate our Bible spotlight question of the month. Various ones of you have been each month. Uh, we put on the last week of the month uh, in the YouTube channel in the community tab, right across the top of the YouTube channel. Right above the videos, there's something that says community. If you tap that, there's an area where we post basically every day. Things about the Lord, 
not just the Sunday school lesson, but all of it is about sweet Jesus. And so we encourage you to go visit there every day. Amen? Well, once a month and the last week of the month, we post uh, there in the community tab, the Bible Spotlight question of the month. So from the Bible Spotlight that I'm just about uh, to teach, um, one of those spotlights will pull out something specific and we'll make it a question. You review the different Bible spotlights during that month, you find the answer. The first one to put the correct answer wins the gift, the free gift from the Bible spotlight for that particular month. Well, we've had winners from uh, Mississippi and Illinois and Texas. And the most recent one you may not know about is from Georgia. Let's celebrate Georgia. <laughs> All of you precious ones that are from Georgia, we celebrate and honor you on today. And some of those that have been winners, uh, they've described how it's been a blessing to them. If you go to our website, uh, you will see their photograph and what their gift was and their description of how it blessed them. Well, for the month of May, the gift this month, we already have it wrapped for the winner. This package is our promise package. <laughs> and it's our joy to send that to you. It includes two books. Well, uh, there are various books that are out there called promise books or the promises of God, and many of them have 100 promises. This one I love, 199, twice as many basically, 199 promises of God. And you would also receive that book along with this. Many of you know about Beth Moore, tremendous Bible teacher, amen? And she has a book, Promises for a Fruitful Life. Oh, what a blessing. So whoever... Uh, is the winner of the Bible Spotlight gift for the month of May. You will receive both of these as the promise package. God bless you. We look forward to sending that to you. So watch in the community tab for that question and then place your answer there. Amen? God bless you. We advertise the Bible Spotlight uh, question of the month on Facebook and various other places, but the place where you put your answer is on the YouTube channel in the community tab. God bless you, precious ones. Well, looking here, the elements of a great struggle. There are five that we want to look at. These are important precious ones because uh, sometimes as believers, we are discouraged when there's a struggle, but we need to know that's part and parcel of it and God is at work in it. And so let's look at one. Number one, when there's a great struggle, there's sacrifice. That means we have to give up something. Uh, a sacrifice, just like they brought sacrifices to the great temple. A sacrifice is something that is important to us that we have to give up. That might be time. It might be uh, the use of our talents. It might be finance. It might be use of skills that we might use for another purpose, but we give those skills uh, to the ministry. Sometimes we sacrifice in uh, uh, physically because the hours are long. The, the uh, efforts that put in may shorten our rest time. Sometimes we have to go into consecration or fasting. So we're giving up food for specific periods and specific times seeking the Lord. All of these things, not abusing the body, but making the sacrifice. So in a great struggle, sacrifice is part of it. And that's okay and it's needful and God will reward us for it. Number two, in a great a struggle, we see suffering. Suffering referring to there's agony, pain. It might be physical pain. It might be mental anguish. My God, Apostle Paul, I believe, talked about uh, the weight and the burden of the churches in the east of Ephesus. Many try to figure out what that is. But the Apostle Paul had anguish. Hallelujah. He said, we're troubled on every side. And all these things he described. Yet, we're not in despair because the Lord's going to bring us through. Amen. And so there's suffering in the mind and the body. Don't be discouraged when that occurs. Seek God for a direction. The Lord, there's some things are for a season. When that season's over, we move on, but we follow the Lord knowing that that is often in the great struggle. Here's number three, endurance. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Don't turn around. My God. One uh, senior elder, he's uh, in his 90s. He said something that has blessed me for the last few years. He said, as a believer, the only way to fail is to quit. Ah, and that doesn't mean we do the same thing the same way perpetually. God changes method, change, take, take a different angle, put this aside and work on this and come back to a different angle. 
But in terms of just giving up, throwing, no, 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 no. God may do redirect us, but we don't give up. Hold on, endure. So endurance, don't give up, don't quit. Don't quit on God, amen. Number four, focus. There has to be a purpose in mind. Ah, God gives us per, uh, progressive clarity. Sometimes we first start, we don't have a completely clear picture. It's like using a lens on a camera and as you adjust it, the picture gets progressive. It's clear and more clear until it's in totally sharp focus. Well, initially, it might not be a perfect focus. We know the direction to go. But as we continue, the thing becomes more clear as we go along. But there has to be a focus. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a purpose. And number five, determination. Determination is I am committed. Oh, glory to God. I'm committed. I'm dedicated. I am devoted to this thing. I will be faithful, faithful unto this thing. Because there's a promise, there's a vow, <coughs> excuse me. There's a covenant in our soul to the thing God has given us to do. And darlings, when we put these five together, the song, uh, the, not only the song, but in the book of Isaiah, uh, the scripture says, I believe it's chapter 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The believer, the Bible says he always causes us to triumph. Victory is ours. If we, by the Spirit of God, not of our own strength can we do it, by the Spirit of God, sacrifice, sacrifice, endure, focus, determination, we coming on through. <laughs> oh, bless this sweet name. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to labor for you. The apostles there in Acts chapter 4, uh, chapter 3, the man uh, at the gate, beautiful. They said, silver and gold, having them, such as we have. The Lord used them. The man was healed. And then they were called in question. In chapter 4, they were even brought before the council and beat. And they said, it's an honor to suffer for the name of Christ. That's why we need these elements at work in believers. Oh, bless his name. Look at uh, verse um Verse two, it says that their hearts may be encouraged while being knit together in love to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery. And what's the mystery? It's Christ learning him. Several words are in here. He wants the people's hearts to be encouraged. Our lives are used by the Spirit of God as tools to encourage someone else. The word encourage is literally to infuse courage. So a person may be in a circumstance and they're so overwhelmed, they don't know what to do. They're thinking about giving up, but they will be encouraged. Courage gets infused in them to continue to stand, to continue to uh, go forward, and to look for alternative uh, um, means and methods, but they stay on target and on task. Be a tool for encouragement of others in the kingdom of God. And that says being knit together, unity, that's necessary. That connection in the body is what helps us to encourage one another. And it's done in love, not competition and not for vainglory, but it's love. We want each other to be encouraged. Look at the next one. To reach all the riches of what? There's great riches in what? Look what it is. A full assurance. Now, this full assurance is talking about when our hope goes to another level. Not wishful thinking, as we talked about in our previous lesson, but we're talking about biblical hope. There's a word from God in our hearts attached to that. Full assurance. That's riches. Because that puts us in a place where we can endure seemingly the unthinkable. Because the grace of God comes richly upon us to endure, to press on with joy. Oh, glory to God. And of course, the joy of the Lord, it is our strength. My, my, full assurance. That's great hope there. That's a strong faith that has infused us with hope. Because faith is what fuels hope. 
It's the gasoline in the tank that keeps hope going. Oh, bless his name. Full assurance of what? Understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ. So understanding and knowledge of Christ. We grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How necessary that is. Lord, we love you. We bless you and we praise you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your sweet son. Thank you for my brothers, sisters, and friends that have joined us for this study. God, make us know in Jesus' name. Anyone facing the great struggle, God, cause this word to reverberate in their soul and then to be encouraged in the name of Jesus. Help us to remember it's a labor. It's a race. It's a war. Put in all of us. You give us the victory in the name of Jesus. God bless you, precious brothers, sisters, and friends. Remember this, the God of the Bible is real. Prepare for your divine appointment with him. It is coming. God bless you until we meet again.